On that note, I think we need to make it more light and more fun. What do you think? And there's no one better to do that than our guest today, who is really, um, I want to call him a rock star, but technically he's not a rock star. He is a country superstar. His name is Ryan Weaver. And Ryan, thank you so much for joining us here today. Oh, I, I can't I can't thank you enough for bringing me on. We've been talking for the last, what, few weeks and and finally got to got, get to hang out together. I'm excited. I know. It's great to finally, I mean, I, I've seen your face, obviously, but here we're talking face to face and it's it's a uh, it's pretty cool and i like to call you um you are the epitome of the american dream in so many ways because for all intents and purposes you are just a a regular guy you fought for our country you are a veteran and today you are a a country superstar and and isn't that what it's what it's all about you are the american dream well, I've been fortunate to, you know, go from boots in the sand in Iraq in 2003 to boots on the center circle of the Grand Ole Opry stage in 2015. And then 2018, I was in Madison Square Garden uh, for my first show. Actually, I got to step that back. I was at T-Mobile Arena headlining in Las Vegas at the PBR World Finals in 2017, replacing Steven Tyler. And no song on the radio, no management, no formal record deal. Um, you know, those kind of things outside of the box of the Nashville, um, uh, you know, the Nashville music industry. And it's, it, it has had a lot to do with the, uh, you know, the hero support that has been behind me uh, as a veteran myself and a two time Gold Star family member. Absolutely. And I know um, everyone here in Las Vegas is so disappointed that PBR isn't going to be here with us this year. It's, it's moving over to Texas, um, which is really sad because it was a great opportunity for us to meet people like you and experience your music. And Vegas is a city that just loves country music so very much. But you did mention that you are a Gold Star family. You yourself, uh, you worked with Blackhawk Aviators and both of your brothers uh, served as well. Um, and both of your brothers uh, died in the wars that you served in. Tell us a little bit about that. So uh, before uh, Randy, who was actually killed in 2013, he was my brother-in-law. I was um, already out of the military when that happened, so I can't say, and I didn't get to serve in Afghanistan. But before that, my brother, my oldest brother, Steve, was an aviator. He flew Kiowa Warriors. My brother, Aaron, was an aviator. He flew Kiowa Warriors as well. And they were um, in the, Aaron was in the Ranger Regiment in Somalia in the ambush in Mogadishu. We just... Uh, went through those dates on October 3rd and 4th. And, but anyway, I followed in their footsteps. They went into the Ranger Regiment. regiment. I went military intelligence and then uh, transitioned to flight school, became a warrant officer. And I flew Blackhawks. They flew Kiowa Warriors. My oldest brother, Steve, had been deployed to combat a few times. And Aaron had also been in combat. But my first time in combat was 2003. I was with the 1st Armored Division. Aaron was with the 82nd Airborne. He came over there after. He was actually deployed after I was. He was a cancer survivor and was non-deployable and had a waiver, had to get a waiver from his uh, division commander to get deployed, but he had to get bi-monthly blood screenings uh, for the cancer that he, uh, it was in remission. He had some pretty extensive surgeries, um, but once he got, he got deployed to Iraq, he had to get bi-monthly blood screenings for that cancer, and he was on a, a, a medevac helicopter on his way to the hospital when it was shot down and killed everyone on board and I redeployed from Iraq uh, back to my hometown for his funeral. And then uh, I was never deployed again after that. And I actually flew the same day that he died in Iraq in combat. And that was the last day that I ever flew a black hawk. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Your family. It's just, uh, They've been so through so much, so so tough. But I know that everything that you've experienced in the military has also really influenced your music as well. Um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong on this, and I apologize if I am, but one of your singles, Gone, uh, was kind of done in part with what happened with um, some of your friends in Benghazi. Is that correct? Yes, Burn Burn was, uh, Burn. I actually got to meet the uh, John Tigan and Mark Geist, uh, Tig and Oz, when they were promoting the film. And I, I played between Ted Nugent and Michael W. Smith at the Vol Charlie Daniels Volunteer Gym here at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. And they were promoting the film before it came out. I had Burn already written and we the lyrics to it were a little bit more military centric. And when the movie was being promoted, I, I initially talked to Mark Geist about getting the song into the film. We adjusted the lyrics a little bit to more fit the Benghazi story. 
Uh, really started becoming close friends with John Tigan after that, and he jumped on board to help me get it funded. And he got Chris Peranto, Tonto, uh, from 13 Hours, for, for your listeners that have seen the movie. The real guy, actually, um, got him on board, and we got it funded in, in a short order. And I was uh, honored to release that film in honor of the Benghazi Four that were lost, but also my brother Aaron, who was killed in Iraq in 2004, and Randy Billings, who was killed in 2013, my brother-in-law. I still call. I don't. I just call him my brother. I don't. The brother-in-law doesn't matter. Right. No, it, it absolutely doesn't. That is amazing. One of the things you've really done with your music is that you have used it um, in an effort to bring awareness to things that are either, either going on in the military or huge issues of the day. And that brings me to uh, my next question and your song Arrival and everything that you are doing now with human trafficking. I don't know that a lot of people realize that here in the United States, we have the worst human trafficking in, in the world. So tell us a little bit about this song and what you're doing with human trafficking today. Well, I think first and foremost, I was listening to your show prior to this and, and um, you know, prior to our interview, I was sitting in a, in, in a backstage listening to the, some of the comments that you're making. And one of the things that I need, you know, that folks really need to know that this isn't a political issue. It's, it's not a Democrat. It's not a Republican. It's not an independent. It's not a political issue at all. Our children are not political pawns in any kind of a, a political game that's being played out there. And we need to, and it affects, human trafficking affects every demographic. It doesn't matter whether you're rich. It doesn't matter whether you're poor. It doesn't matter whether you're black, white, it, whatever, it, it, it affects everyone. And the cases have skyrocketed over the last several years. The uh, Most of the updated information that we have on human trafficking has such a significant increase that it's surpassed drug money for cartel um, business going across the border. To think that humans are actually being trafficked for either into the sex, um, the sex business or the slavery business, uh, it, it's just disgusting to know that that's happening in America. But it is absolutely happening, and you know I, I'm not a door kicker as I, as as a lot of my friends are, the Special Operations Command folks, and you know folks like Craig Sawyer and J.P. Cervantes, and uh, you know the three Benghazi heroes, uh, Dave Benton, Chris Pronto, and John Tigan that are involved in, in this project that we're doing. I'm not that kind of a guy. I wasn't a tactical guy. I'm a country music artist and I want to apply my voice um, to the cause to be able to support it as much as possible. So we're doing this um, a short film public service announcement called Arrival. I have three Benghazi heroes that are involved in it. Craig Sawyer, who also has a show out right now called Contra Land uh, that is a pedophile busting show. And we have a huge cast of uh, law enforcement first responders and professional shooters involved in the, in, in the show as well. And we just recently picked up Chuck Liddell from the UFC uh, to put his star name on there to try and help us with getting this thing funded and getting it done. So, and the movie is uh, that you're the short film that you're making, you're actually going to allow all of the human trafficking organizations nationwide, because there's so many in churches, so many, I know uh, we've got worth fighting for and so many here in Las Vegas, you're going to actually kind of partner with them and let them use the video to help get the message out, correct? Absolutely. I mean, so the project, just to give you a little bit of background on the project, and initially, if you watch my music video, Burn, that we were just talking about, um, I, I wanted to up that one. And before I even knew about the human trafficking element in the U.S., which, believe it or not, I'm traveling around in circles with people that are already involved in it, and I didn't know a whole lot about it. I started doing the research and uh, talked with ex executive producer T.J. Kurgan on this, and he said, Ryan, instead of doing, you know, just upping the ante on an action video, let's let's talk about what, uh, what's really going on, uh, something that's starting to spread across the United States that's a huge problem and it's human trafficking. Uh, and once I started researching it, it really, I mean, my heart was breaking uh, and, and I was shocked because uh, I figured I would know a little bit more about this based off of the community that I'm in and, and the folks that I travel with. Um, so we decided to, instead of just doing a music video, we couldn't tell a story that was going to be impactful and, and, and change people's lives and talk about the human trafficking uh, that's going on. Uh, so we decided to do a short film public service announcement and then a collateral music video that's going to support that short film. So we have it on a couple of different um, media platforms, but the, the music video is now a secondary project. And we're going to give this film to any and every human trafficking organization that wants it to put their own public service announcement on the backside. We'll sign a, a licensing agreement uh, to give it to them for free. 
Um, church organizations are spending the majority, if not all of their money on the human trafficking effort to support other organizations out there. Not every human trafficking organization is large enough and has enough funding to be able to do their own marketing. We're going to put this project together to support all of those organizations and try and make the biggest impact that we possibly can. And then once, once again, you know, we'll try and promote the music video off to the side to support the film in that regard as well. And the music video uh, is, is Arrival also the music video that is a part of this. And that's really your latest song. Tell us a little bit about Arrival. So Arrival was uh, is actually an interesting song because I recorded it specifically for the arenas when I was performing with the PBR across the nation from Madison Square Garden all the way to Golden One Center in Sacramento. Um, it, I was seeing how the PBR uses music to pump the crowd up and get them motivated. It's a, just an incredible show. I know you've been to them. It's, it's something um, that is incredibly entertaining. And the music is a, is a large aspect of that. So we recorded Arrival essentially as a pump you up thing. And then also for any sports out there, you name it, college football, uh, any kind of sport that, that wants that pump you up song, that's what Arrival was for. And I would, like I said, we were going to have an action film to, uh, to uh, you know, an action music video to one up burn because it's a lot of, there's a lot of action in there if you watch it, um, the folks out there listening. But, um, you know, the, the song was recorded. I actually co-wrote it with Eric Turner, who's the rhythm guitar player uh, from Warrant. Uh, you know, she's my cherry pie warrant. He's, he gave us the guitar lick. Um, I, we have four other writers on the song. We wrote this across the United States, Craig Wilson, um, David, uh, uh, DJ, DJ after party is his name. And, and we got a, co a folk, uh, excuse me, a producer out of Kentucky that you know, we added as a co-writer because he assisted us in getting this done as well. I mean, we wrote that song and recorded it all the way from California to New York. It wasn't recorded in just one studio. So, and it's got a, it's a multi-genre, cross-genre mix. It's got some dubstep in there, some 80s rock. It's got some country music. It's a, and it, because we wanted to appeal to everybody that was in the Western sports crowd. And it, it worked. I think I, I mentioned it on Instagram one day that, you know, I'm this, you know, gal who grew up in the East Bay of Oakland and I like my gangster rap. <laughs> and I, but you know what? Your song, it spoke to me because it did have all of those elements to it. It wasn't that traditional type of country song. And I absolutely love it. And I know our listeners, our viewers, they're going to love it too. Uh, big, big news right here. Our giveaway today is actually going to be a copy of Arrival that Ryan's yep. going to send to you, which is huge um, and Ryan is so generous he's going to stay with us for a while I'm going to do an exclusive interview with him a little bit later and I'm going to ask him if he'll just stay on for a few minutes more in the next block so we can give away that uh, signed copy of Arrival to someone Ryan tell everyone real quickly uh, before we have to go to break where can people find you on Facebook Instagram buy your albums all that good stuff WeaverCountry.com is my website. That's WeaverCountry.com. has all of my social media on there. Um, most of the stuff I think you and I uh, got together on Instagram for the at Ryan Weaver Country. That page has blown up recently, but you can find all of my social media on there and download my singles that we have out right now. Absolutely. And one of your other big singles that everyone loves is He's Still My President. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Chad Prather and I had fun with that one. Everybody who's like, he's not my president. And it's the perfect answer. It's the perfect response. <laughs> oh, yes. Scream at the sky, all y'all haters. Scream at the sky. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, we've got to take a quick commercial break. But when we come back, uh, we're going to have much more to talk about. We're going to give away that Arrival album and so much more. So don't go anywhere, my friends. Thanks a bunch.